see what happens. All right, I'm live so far. All right, well, praise the Lord again. Thank you for tuning in on um, Google Meet tonight as well. Uh, thank the Lord for this opportunity. In spite of what the enemy tries to do to just deter and distract, we still have the victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, um, those of you on Google Meet, I'm going to ask questions too, and feel free to converse with me in the questions with your commentaries because I want some feedback. I don't want to be the only one just talking. That's one reason why I'm trying to incorporate the Google Meet in our classes uh, so we can have time we all can share each other's thoughts to uh, engage in conversation with the word that we're talking about, okay? So to have a word of prayer, Chris God, our Father, Lord, I thank you for your presence today, for your goodness and mercy bestowed upon us. We bind every demonic force and every attack and assault to come against this word tonight, oh God. We thank you for the free, Father God, access to the airways that the word will go forth with power and authority. Father God, to bind every demonic force and attack, oh God, that cause it to come to naught. Because your word tells it that no enemy, Father God, that comes against it will prosper. And we come tonight claiming the victory, God, even in our lesson that it will go forth, Father God, that you speak by your spirit, help bring enlightenment, bring change. And even encouragement to our hearts. And we thank you in Jesus' name that you forgive for our sins, knowing, unknowingly, cleanse from all unrighteousness, saturate your anointing, let your anointing flow through our hearts as a reservoir from heart to heart. Father God, to inspire, edify, and build us up in our faith to trust you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All amen. right. Tonight, what I want to talk about is uh, faith takes back what the devil has stolen. Faith takes back what the devil has stolen, okay? So one of the scriptures that I found in conjunction with this is in Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. And it is verse 30. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 30 and 31. So men do not despise a thief. If he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. Amen. Verse 31. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. So sevenfold is a number means you got to give seven times that which you have stolen back to who the person you stole from to satisfy the debt that it, you have injuncted upon their life. So we got to begin to trust God tonight that whatever the enemy has stolen from you, sometimes we feel like the enemy stole our peace or mind. Sometimes he's taken away our joy. Sometimes he take away our, our comfort. Sometimes he take away our thought, thought life of being focused and, and resting in the promise of the Lord. So he take away your rest. And we have to reclaim it by faith. Reclaim what the enemy has stolen from you by faith. And Hebrews 11 and 1. Go to Hebrews 11 and 1 with me tonight. This is, this is our, our foundation scripture of faith. Hebrews 11 and 1. Let's see here. And verse 1, it says, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So in the Amplified Version, it puts it this way. Now, faith is the assurance, title deed, confirmation. Of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. 
Then he goes on verse 2, for by this kind of faith, the men of old gained divine approval. And what this word is talking about here, whatever you believe in God for in your life, many times you don't see it with the natural eye. You have to see it with the spiritual eye. And when it says faith, it's a title deed. Just like when you go to purchase a vehicle, your personal home, you get the title deed to that, to that possession of what you have paid for. But it says faith, it's a title deed, a confirmation. So even though I don't feel myself being healed, it don't look like I'm being healed, doesn't look like I'm being delivered, I am still believing that God is going to manifest his power in my life, that I, what I'm praying for, I'm trusting God for, it will come to pass in my life, right? So it says, of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed. So God deemed it to be so in your life. So whatever it is you believe in God for, he said, it's, it's done. Faith is coming to agreement with the spirit of living God that whatever God has promised me, I can have it. I can stand on the word. I can believe God for the word. I can see the word manifest in my life because the word only would produce what I want it to produce in my life. So if I don't believe God for anything in my life, to manifest, how can I live a prosperous life? Absence of faith. We have faith when you get, go outside, you won't get hurt walking out to your car. You got faith that you're going to make it back home to, when you go out on a destination. You got faith to make it to your destination. We got faith if I go to the store and I got a credit card, I can buy what I want and the car won't be denied. We got faith in the natural things, but when it comes to the spiritual things, believing God that I can overcome an accusation or, or an assault that comes against me by faith, by speaking the word of God. Just because the enemy attacks you through other people. I talked about this in previous lessons. The reaction versus the pro, being proactive. If I'm proactive, I'm constantly spending time in the Word of God. I'm feeding my spirit man. I'm nurturing my spirit man. So when something comes to throw me for a loop or catch me off guard, I'm not quick to respond the way they're coming at me. But I'm responding by the spirit living God the way God wants me to handle situations. Just like, for example, you go to work <clears throat> and they give you extra load of work to do for that day and you begin to complain, you get grumbling, you get mad, you get upset. And God is saying tonight, allow the Holy Spirit to put a check in your spirit, to calm your spirit when it comes to dealing with situations that's beyond your control. If you don't allow the Spirit of God to show you by faith what I'm trusting God for, you might need a better job. And you've been praying for this job, you've been fasting for this job, and it doesn't seem like it's going to ever happen. But faith operates with the hope of the thing that's been divinely guaranteed by the Lord. And it says the evidence of faith Things not seen. The conviction of their reality. So the reality, what it's referring to here, is not the reality of the natural. It's the spiritual reality. Because if I always focus on the natural reality, I will become disappointed. But if I turn my focus and begin to focus on God's reality, it doesn't matter what the enemy does, what he tried to bring to me to discourage me, 
I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord because I know that with confidence and boldness that God is still working in my life to will and do according to his good pleasure. Amen. Anyone got any questions or comments at this time? Glory to God. No question or comment? Okay. Well, let's proceed. Go ahead. Somebody got to say? All I was going to say is say that when you, when you have your eyes stuck on, well, when you see everything in a carnal, in a carnal perspective, yes, you never see, you know, you can never see things, you know, but it's like your spiritual, your spiritual eyes that you can see. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's exactly because when you look beyond the natural into the spirit, Holy Spirit confirms to you what you're seeing in the spirit eye will manifest in the natural. And what I mean by that, too, is that when I'm trusting God for spiritual maturity and I want to be better, I want to be more submissive to his will, to the Lordship's authority. But there's habits in my life, there's addictions in my life, there are things that prevent me from living this fruitful life in the presence of the Lord. And the only way to overcome that is to get into the place where I call upon the name of the Lord in prayer, find scriptures to feed my spirit, and begin to allow the Lord to draw me back to himself to where I find myself Telling God, God, I got this problem I've been dealing with. I have this issue in my life. I can't seem to shake. It's like every time I turn around, I keep making the same mistake. And, 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 and when you do that, God himself will show up. Hold up. Give me a second. I'm going to type this message. Okay. So God himself will show up. In your circumstance, he'll send people along in your pathway to bring an encouraging word to you, a prophetic word to you, to speak something that no one else knows about you but God. And it'd be just what you need to hear to motivate you, to encourage you, to stir you up, to come back to Christ. And when we find ourselves walking in submissiveness to his lordship and authority, the devil is a lie. The devil can't stop you. He can only try to discourage you, but he can't stop you from doing what God wants you to do because God's presence is with you and his power is working in you to fulfill his calling on your life. Amen. I did something wrong here. Give me one second. I'm trying to get this Facebook thing right. Give me one second. There we go. I'm on, but it's not showing on here. Okay, here we go. Glory to God, glory to God. I don't know, there's something going on with this Facebook tonight. It's tripping. I ain't going to worry about it. But anyway, so when you get to the place in yourself and you say, okay, God, here I am. I, I made, made a mistake. I messed up God. I called on your name. And it's like every time I find myself becoming better, Something happens to knock me backwards again. But Lord, here I am. I surrender to you that you will come into my heart and begin to reveal to me what it is I need to do to glorify your name. Amen. So let's get into our book tonight. And it says, Faith takes back what the enemy has stolen. Let me go back to chapter one. I'm going to hang on chapter four. But this is this is a good. This is gonna be a good lesson too. But if you have any other questions, feel free to to let me know. If you got something, you know, add to the lesson tonight. Okay, here we go. Responding to God's gifts. Responding to God's gifts. So I am online. Okay, it's showing I'm online. Yeah, you're alive. I'm, I'm watching you on my, um, my okay. computer. All right. I don't know why it kicked me out, though, but it, I guess I am alive. Okay. So it says, responding to God's gifts. 
The other day I began thinking about the word take. And I began to realize that things have to be taken in the spiritual realm. They just don't fall on you. You have to reach out and take them. Let's pause right here for a moment. Okay, so here, here's what the author is talking about. The word taken means something that's been stripped from you, right? And he says, we have to take these back in the spirit realm, not in the natural. So, for example, we can take our children back from the enemy. Our children might go astray. We put the principles in their hearts, the foundation in their hearts of the love of God for them. And then somewhere down the road, they fall in short and messed up straight away, just like the prodigal son. And the father still there with his arms open waiting on them to come back. So they find themselves gravitating to the presence of the Lord, right? By your prayers. So even though they ignore the voice, I still can speak life over them. I can speak the word of God over them. And I can decree and declare that they are coming back in the presence of the Lord. So the way they come back is by my commitment to intercede for them. So I begin to decree in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus right now over my children's mind, their hearts, that Lord, you draw them back to yourself, that whatever they're going through in their life, God, that the Spirit of God will bring them back to you in the name of Jesus. And when you do that, God himself will begin to manifest his power in their life down during their life journey. And somewhere down the road, something strikes in their heart a desire to want to return to the Lord. So they, don't, they just don't fall on you. You have to reach out and take them. So you got to reach out in faith. Say, okay, I'm taking back my finances. I'm taking back my health. I'm taking back my strength. I'm taking back my love for God. I'm taking everything the enemy stole for me. Salvation is an example. Did any of you get saved without reaching out and taking what God was offering you? That's a question. Can anyone of you answer that question? Did any of you get saved without reaching out and taking what God has, has offered you? Anybody? Um, I don't... <clears throat> You said that any of us get saved by reaching out and asking God, I mean, and taking what God has offered us? Without reaching out. Oh, without, oh and you, you have to go through something in order to um, get what you need from the Lord, I feel. You know. I'm going to read the question again. Salvation is an example. Did any of you get saved without reaching out and taking what God was offering you? Oh, <clears throat> no. Okay. Anyone else going to answer that? Want to answer that question? I would also say no. I mean, salvation is a gift. And you can't receive a gift if you, don't, you can't get the gift if you don't really receive it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So both your answers are correct. Amen. Did salvation just fall on you? These are questions. Did salvation just fall on you? Or, I think it's, go ahead. I think it's something that you had to go through. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause sometimes, you know, like people have to go through different things in order to be saved. You know, like right. they, they they just have to go through something in order to be saved and uh, be in a place where, where they are with the Lord. Because they'd be like, well, I don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand why things happen in my life, this, that, and the other. Uh, why did this happen? You know, you, you have to go through something in order to be saved to me. Absolutely. That is so true. Because the word says, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift from God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So salvation, when God offered to us through his messengers, is a free will offering. And it's up to you to make a decision to accept that offering or reject that offering. For example, 
you go into the grocery store and you begin to buy some things and someone come along and says, you know what, uh, you don't got to pay for that. I'll pay for it for you. And you're like, no, no, I, I, I got this. I can take care of myself. And they're being persistent with the free offering to pay for your stuff. Many times because of pride, we neglect the gift. Salvation, God says, okay, I'm giving you salvation. And salvation is healing, it's deliverance, it's victory, it's faithfulness. It's everything I want to give you in this package. But somewhere in, in the road, we reject the package. So when God says, you know what? All you got to do is just accept it. it, it it's paid for. You don't have to do nothing else for it. Just believe. Only believe. And I get in myself pride where I'm not ready to quit smoking. I'm not ready to quit drinking. I'm not ready to quit thugging. I'm not ready to quit doing all, all these, these academic things I do in my flesh. And God is saying, if you just let go of yourself, I'll take care of the rest of this stuff. All I'm looking for you is say yes to my will, receive my salvation, and in the process, I'll clean you up. But we always have an excuse. If I can stop doing what I'm doing, get myself ready, then I'll come to church and give my life to the Lord. Not knowing that's a trap from the enemy because he uses that as a tool to keep you distracted from surrendering to his lordship and authority. So I keep on resisting and opposing God and all the time I find myself still stuck in a dark place. So one thing about God's word, he wants us to be reminded that you can live this free life in Christ Jesus by accepting him as Lord and Savior, knowing that he paid the price, don't cost you nothing but your humbleness, your submissiveness, your surrender to his will. So it says, did salvation just fall on you, or did you respond and reach out and take the gift of God with offering you in salvation? And that's a true statement. We all have reached out and received it. How many businessmen attain success without going out and taking it? Do they just sit back in their offices, put their feet on their desk and say, well, I'm a businessman. I know all the business principles and I have big business deals and have big business deals following them, not often. They are successful because they go out, take hold of situations, and make them work. Jabbar is an example. He knows about starting a business. He knows it's not just going to fall in your lap. It takes some work. It takes some requirement. It takes you doing some action, putting some actions in place, getting out there, doing something, check the market, check the area, see how can I become productive in a certain area of my life. Amen. And, and they're right. It's not just going to happen. Yes, it is. No, it doesn't. No, no. Why did it happen like that? But the thing is, you got to understand, in order, in order to be able to get to the point where you want to be successful, you got to go through some things in order to be able to get you to the destination that God wants you to get right. to. Right. That is so true. That is so true. Because whatever direction God leads you, what idea he gives you for a business, God will bless that idea and that concept of your vision, the plan that you write down, and you begin to believe God for it, God says, faith without works is dead. And he says, when you put your faith mixed with the works, then it causes success in your life. And that's what God does in all of our lives today. He gives us ideas. He gives us dreams. He gives us visions. He connected with the right people who has resources. He connected with people who are wealthy, who can pour into your life. Even the, I, I've known businessmen who met wealthy folks who came into their life 
and sold it to their first business and helped that business get off the ground and became very successful. Even ministries. I know ministries where God sent a businessman at the right time who was wealthy into a certain business of that ministry to come into that church because they've been praying, believing God, that God's going to send them people, going to soar to the ministry. The ministry can be able to expand. It can grow. It can reach many people in the community. And it can do all these different things that they want to do in their vision. And all of a sudden, a certain person comes to visit who has just what you've been praying for. They have a business. They have a building. They have a marketing. They have everything you need to pour into your ministry to get it off the ground. And before you know it, you're a worldwide ministry. Many of these mega churches started just like that in storefronts. And God sent them to the right people who had visions that connect with their vision and caused them to prosper. It seems that man is programmed to be a success. Do any of you not want to succeed? I've never met anybody who didn't want to succeed. Have you? Everybody I've met has wanted to be a success. You have to desire success. You have to begin to want success. You got a hunger for success. But most of all, the very most important thing is the hunger for the Lord to make you successful. Because when I hunger after God and thirst for righteousness, he said, all these things will be added unto me. So anything I've been praying for, been trusting God for, God says it will begin to manifest when you put me first in the midst of it. And then everything else will fall in place in your life. My God, that is so awesome. That is so awesome. Glory to God. Amen. Some people may say they don't want to be a success. But don't listen to their words. Watch their actions. That's something to think about. Many people may say they don't want to be success. But don't listen to their words. Watch their actions. Their actions prove they want to be a success because they're out there striving for it every day. I've met many people like that during ministry who says, I don't want to be a minister. I don't want to be an evangelist. I don't want to be a prophet. I don't want to be a teacher. I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to be an apostle. I don't want to be a bishop. But every time you talk to them, their actions is always got them in a position of glorifying and talking about God and prophesying to other people. Have you met somebody like that? Who said they ain't a minister or a prophet, but yet they always prophesy, always talking about the Lord, trying to tell you what God has for your life, how God mm -hmm. changed their life, how God did this, God did that for them, but I don't want I don't want to be in that position. <laughs> Any question or comments? You know what they lie to themselves because they really want to be in a position to do the work of the Lord. But you know, sometimes um I think fear fear gets in the way of people really walking in their calling and doing the things that they're supposed to do for the Lord, I believe. That's it. You know. You hit it on the head. I was talking to the director of the building I live in today. And he began to share with me his story of how he became the director. He started out as a property manager. And as a property manager of another building, he was assigned to the building I live in. He was over here for about three years, three, three, three four years. Then, because they started adding more work into him, they saw him qualified to be exalted to another position. So he stayed here 
even though he was exalted to director, it put him in the position of director. He still stayed here for another year as a director, as a manager of the building, even though he was a director. And he says, many times, I quit in my mind. <coughs> Excuse me. He said, many times I sat here in my office and I said, what am I doing here? I, I'm tired of this job. I need to be somewhere else. There's so much stuff going on. I, I'm, I just want to just quit. He said that was his mouth saying that. But he said within his heart, he knew he was qualified and had to do what he do because he did it to the best of his ability. There are many times we do a job and we tell ourselves, I ought to quit. I ought to just go find something else. I ought to just move to another location. And every time you think about it, <coughs> excuse me, trying to fulfill it, you find yourself being stuck right where you are, doing what you love the most because that's where you know God put you. And that's what he told me. He said, God put me in this position so I have to do it to the best of my ability, even though I feel like quitting. But he said, but God connected me with a VP of the company who people thought was arrogant, was prideful, was mean, was sarcastic, was racist. And come to find out, she was none of those things that people thought about her. She one of the most nicest, humble people you can ever meet. And I told her, I said, you know what? I got a chance to meet her myself and sit out and talk with her one day. And I found out from sitting in her office, she's the most loving and kind-hearted person you ever meet. She would share some of her traveling pictures with me of her children, how she went skiing in the winter and traveled different places and all this and that with her children and how much she loved her family. And I said, that's how God is. We think God is mean. We think God is, is cutting blessings from us. We think God don't want you to prosper. We think God don't want us to be successful because we're looking at it through a fleshly mindset. But when I look into the spirit and I see in the word of God, whether Jeremiah 33 and 3, he said, the, and, and the prophet spoke from of old, that I have loved thee with an everlasting love. And by my loving kindness have I drawn thee. That lets me know that if I do what God says, when he told the children of Israel, Deuteronomy chapter 6, I think it's verse 4. He said, love the Lord. He said, hear, O Israel. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, and thy strength. When I follow the principles of God's word, then I can accept the fact that he loves me unconditionally. And it doesn't matter what I go through in this life. Nothing can change the love of God in my heart because he loves me unconditionally. I tell you, God is so amazing. He is so amazing. I don't know what my book is messing up tonight on this thing. But I tell you, when you begin to walk by faith and not by sight into the promise of God's word, you'll find out that everything God has spoken will begin to manifest in your life. Amen. Let's go to page um, was it two. Yeah, page two. It says, it seems that man is programmed to be, be a success. So do any of you not want to succeed? I've never met anyone who didn't want to succeed. Let's go a little further. It's a success comes when an individual realizes 
what he has. Did you hear what I just said? Did you understand that? Success comes when an individual what it says realize what he has. Anybody want to comment on that? When you become what God called you to be, that's when the change happens. When when you start walking in your calling and do the things that the Lord wants you to do, that's when your life will forever change. Um, but it, and it's something because you will know, like God will be speaking to you like you're walking in the right direction that you need to go. And it's, it, you just know that you're walking in the place that you need to be with the Lord. That's right. But, but, but you'll be blessed in the natural, you that's know, right. too, as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. That is so true. And that's where the blessing begins to manifest when I come to realize that what God has promised me can't no devil in hell take it away from me. He can try to stop me. He can try to block it. He can try to bring discouragement, have people speak negatively against me. But he cannot stop what God has promised me so in my life. My God, my God, this is so good. Wait, I, I got one thing to say. But when you, when you, wait a minute. When you realize what your potential is, your life will forever change. I mean, like that's true. That's what, true. I, I don't know if just something hit me. But when you walk in the potential that God has for you, because we have uh, views of our own self, but God has a totally different view than yes, what we have. You know what I'm saying? Yes, He does. But when you begin to walk in the anointing of the Lord, Hallelujah. Your life will change. Things will change. You will be blessed tremendously. I mean, I mean, oh, I can't. I'm yes, starting to get excited thinking about it. Yes, it will. You will be blessed tremendously because then you get to the place where you don't care what nobody says, what they think about it. I'm only listening to what the Holy Spirit tells me. God confirms it. Says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So whatever God has spoken to me, it shall be established by the Spirit of God, into where it will begin to manifest in its proper time and season in my life. Let's go on a little further and say, who is he? And what ability he possesses in the natural? Then he takes those abilities and surrounds himself with people who have abilities in areas where he is weak. That is good. That's a good statement right there. Because success comes when I realize what I have and then how God will, like I just mentioned before, God will connect you to the right people at the right time in your life who will begin to manifest in the areas where you're weak at, they take up the slack and become the strength in your life to where they become strong in the area of your life until they help build you up in the same area where they're strong at so you can become strong. You cannot be strong if you don't desire to be strong. I've known many, many weak men of God. My, I had a pastor years ago called Spaghetti Backbone Christians because they were so weak and so frail in their Christian walk with God, they had no faith to believe God for anything. And God wants us to know tonight that I have given every man a measure of faith. It's up to you to take the word of God, to believe in yourself what God has promised, that his faith will begin to manifest in your life to bring things to pass for you. It's amazing, really amazing when you really think about how much God loves us. God wants us to prosper. He had his, his, one of his writers begin to manifest in the word of God. He said, brother, I beseech you. He, what he said, he said, brother, I wish the world you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. I think it's Jude 6 or Jude 3, one of the scriptures. And, and he says, I want you to prosper. So God, God desire, that's his desire for you and me to prosper. That's his will for you and me to prosper. So we got to begin to believe within ourselves that I, I might be weak today, but this is not eternal, what I say, eternal uh, uh, process in my life. Well, I'm going to be stuck in the same way. They make 
a strong team and go out and take success. This is something. I'm sitting there thinking about this for a second. So, let's say Jabbar. Like Jabbar, I know, like I know he's very strong when it comes to the business world. A lot of knowledge he has. And he knows a lot of things that I don't know when it comes to corporation and businesses. So, I know more of the spiritual side of things. And I might be getting ready to do something that's, that's going to be successful in the natural, but I don't know how to do it. Don't know how to do it. But I know what God told me to do. So I call him, say, cuz, check this out. God says, I want you to write a book, but he says, I'm going to connect you with a company who's going to cause, cause this book to get off the ground to be marketed. And he says, well, you know what, cuz? Uh, I know, I know a, um, a company already who will take that same book you've got and I can connect you with them who will market your book. God will take the weakness I don't know that I have, take the strength he has in knowledge, put us together, and cause it to become successful. So he'll connect me to a person who can proofread the book, a person who can, who can get the book copywritten, so all the details for this book to be in place, he'll know all that that I don't know. But when we come together, put our heads together, God says, you know what? Now they make a strong team. So the book that's been written can now be placed in the right hands of the right business, the right company, to now be marketed worldwide. I have a sister went through the same thing. Wrote a book. As a matter of fact, she wrote two books. Beautiful Mendation. It's her first book. It's a love story. And when she first was writing a book, she would call me with pointers to help me proofread her book. And she'd tell me different things she wrote and would say, what do you think about this? Should I reword this or should I say this? So I gave her a lot of pointers in her book. And she put it in her book. And guess what? Her book is sold worldwide. All because she took the initiative. Success was already there, but she took the initiative to market herself. Because she knew what she wanted. She had a vision, she had a dream, and a heart for success. Hope this hope you're learning something tonight. Because that, that's what it's all about. Because in order to take back what the enemy has taken from you, you got to know what it is. I can't take something back where a person steals from me if I don't know what it is. It's like, for example, a person breaks in your house. They steal your jewelry. They steal your TV. They steal your stereo. They steal all your possessions that are of a value. And you go file a police report, and they say, you got any proof of what was taken? And your answer is no. But I know they broke in my house. They took my stuff. What stuff did they take? Well, um, I think it was my television. I think it was my jury. What was the jury? Uh, I don't remember. So how you file a report for something you don't know what's been taken? Check this out. This is Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost says, when I go to God and I realize that the enemy has violated my life, held me back for many years from becoming successful in my purpose and the vision, the plan God has for my life. And I've been praying about it and trust in God, but no action. So the Lord says in his word, we just read it, when a thief is found, he has to be paid seven times that what he stole. The reason it says seven, because seven is the end of a thing. Eight is the beginning of something new. So the enemy has stolen seven, so, so, so stole thief from you. 
He has repaid seven times. So God says once he repaid seven times, the completion of the process of the things he stole from you. So now you're entitled in the new beginning to go to God and say, God, I believe by faith I'm taking back my ministry. I'm taking back the call on my life. I'm taking back my regulated mindset of peace to think of the things that are lovely, just, good report, virtue, praise, the things that are praiseworthy. I'm taking it back. I'm taking back the fruit of the Spirit. I'm taking back. Because I got my sight set on the things that have been stolen from me. My finances may have been stolen. But I got my sight set on God, who is my provider, as Jehovah Jireh, a God who's more than enough, who has the power to take things back. <coughs> what the enemy took from me. And God says, you can have it. It's yours. By faith. You believe it. You claim it. Find a scripture, back it up, and stand on the word and watch God bring it to pass in your life. And every time the enemy come against you, God says when a thief is found, he got to restore everything he stole from you because of the Spirit of God has deemed it to be so in your life. That you should no longer be violated, no longer assaulted, no longer stripped of your rights and your privileges. But tonight we're taking back our rights and our privileges. We're taking back our success. We're taking back our mindsets of peace and righteousness and joy in the Holy Ghost. We're taking back because what God has promised. He said, the enemy cannot take it from you. But the problem comes in. We don't know the word. So when the enemy comes against us, he violates you because you gave him permission. So tonight, we're closing the door on permission to the enemy to have access in and out of our lives. And we're telling him no more. So you have access into my house because my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And as a temple of the Holy Ghost, every precious promise, everything that pertains to life and godliness, I receive it by faith. And that's what God says. As a temple, as a vessel of the Most High God, Everything God promised you is yours by faith. You can receive it by faith. You can have it by faith. And know with confidence it's yours. We'll read a little bit more, then we're going to finish. We'll start uh, the rest of it next week. It says, usually, if you study business partners closely, you will find that one has expertise in one area and his partner has expertise in another area. Put them together and they have expertise in all areas of their business. We we're just talking about this. I might be weak, you might be strong. We come together, put our, our differences together, put our ideas together, our concepts together, come together, agree on one vision, and watch God cause the expertise of our hearts of togetherness cause the business to see. If they need more expertise, check this out, this is good. They'll go out and find department heads or supervisors to handle those jobs. And they become successful. And they become successful. 
And the reason why they become successful, they let go of selfishness and pride and decided to work together for things to come together in their life to make them successful. And that's what we have to do according to the word of God is allow the spirit of God to manifest in our lives. Here's another scripture. Give me one second here. It says in James chapter 2, you believe that God is one and you do well. Even the demons believe and they shudder or tremble. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. So with God, nothing is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. When we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. It's a faith walk. It's a faith walk. The life we're living is a faith walk. So every day, I got a purpose. When I get up in the morning to praise the Lord, to glorify him, to start my day, putting him first. Because the only way I can live by faith is putting God first, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. And God himself will show up in your life and cause you to prosper in every area of your life because he is the successor who orchestrates your steps in your life in order to become successful. Amen. So let's close in a word of prayer and then I'm as I always do give the invitation to uh, Christ. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this lesson tonight. I pray, oh God, that we're learning something, oh God, to help enhance our faith in you, to trust you, to cause us to grow in grace and the knowledge of who you are. Forgive us for the times we failed to trust you. The times, oh God, we got stubborn and arrogant and prideful in our lives. We allow ourselves to be distracted from walking in your will, your plan, your purpose. But tonight, Lord God, we make a decisive decision to trust with your word. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. To trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways and knowledge, and we shall direct your path. We come believing, God, that you're going to do just that as we trust in you, that you would direct our path, oh God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I thank you for joining in tonight. You might be on here the backslide tonight, don't know Jesus. You might be one who walked away from Jesus and once walked with him. Tonight, you can make a decision to come back to the Lord because the Lord says his arms are open to the backsliders to receive you back to himself just by praying this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowing, and cleanse me from all right unrighteousness. And Lord, I ask that you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that simple prayer, if you just got restored, you got born again, the angels of heaven are rejoicing over one sinner who's made a decisive decision to follow Jesus Christ tonight. Amen, amen. Any questions or comments before we go? Any questions or comments? You are my panel tonight. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Any questions from my panel? <laughs> Any comments from the my panel? I, the only thing I have to say is that um, uh, right now,
right now in this season that I want us to all walk, walk in our purpose and to do the will of the Lord and just be obedient to his word because he wants us to, to walk, you know, to live our life holy and do the things that we're supposed to do, you know, pertaining to his will. But he also, also want to bless us um, naturally, too. He wants us to walk in our purpose and do the things that we need to do. I mean, because it's the thing about it is sometimes we can only hold our own self up from being where we need to be because we want to still stay, you know, be in the place that we're in and know that we really need to be walking um, deeper to God's presence and doing the things, the work of the Lord, basically, doing the things that we're supposed to do. That is so true. So basically, that walking so your purpose and mm -hmm. uh, move fear out the way, trust in God's word, and know so that true. God will deliver you, set you free from whatever you may be going through because he, want, he wants you to be blessed exceedingly and abundantly with all the great things that he has for you. Amen. Amen. You're right about that. You're right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Well, <laughs> I well, based off of, from the lesson, the lesson, and just understanding that God truly is looking for us to just trust Him. That's it. Trust Him in everything that you go through, even though you might not agree with it. That's right. But just understanding that God was the one that created us. We didn't create ourselves. That's right. And, that's, and, you know, that's true. So that's true. For me, for me, with everything I'm going through, I never question why. You know, because it's like for me i always thought about hey if you question the lord about why am i going through this mm -hmm. it's like you know it was just like with Job, you know hey doing the process hey when god showed up and does he was saying hey hey he basically said to Job, hey man hey you wasn't there when i created this world you wasn't <laughs> hey when i was trying to think about true. this you wasn't here thinking with me Hey, you yeah, know, true. I decided to say I wanted the fish to move around. I want the water to do this. I want the crowd to do this. That's right. And it's like, you know, so that's why I said that with everything that occurred and happened, I thank the Lord that I went through it because if I didn't go through it, then I wouldn't be able to have faith of a mustard seed, so I couldn't be able to just, you know, because it, like right now, I don't care what anybody says. Somebody might say, I mean, you're not going to make it. Right. And that's your opinion. You you got the right to your opinion, but I ain't gotta listen to it. Right. I mean, yeah, but I ain't gotta listen to it. That's and right. I'm not gonna let you stop me from what God has me getting ready to go because we all have a destination to get to. And the Lord is mm -hmm. about to take us to the next level in God. You're right. Amen. So, yeah, so you're right about that. And, and you both are accurate because that's one thing we do. We hinder ourselves, knowing that wherever God is trying to take you to a different place in, in the spirit, in ministry, we, we allow ourselves to be distracted. And that's where you have to have that focus. Because if you have focus, that's why I love my radio program I'm on each week, mm -hmm. Focus 2020, because it's not just not talking about a natural eyesight. We're talking about a spiritual eyesight. I have a 2020 focus on what God has called me to do in my life. My life becomes successful, becomes prosperous. I see things beyond the natural realm. I can see into people's lives. I can pour into people's lives. I can trust God's word that whatever he told me to do, it would manifest in their life. Because it cannot manifest if I don't see it myself. If I don't see Amen. what God has called me to do in my own life, how can I be effective in, in somebody else's life? Amen. You know, so it's so important to know with confidence, without a shadow of a doubt, that God is the one that's the underlying factor in my life that has the power and the ability to make me successful. You know, as I trust him in his yes. word, his word will manifest. His word will manifest. Yes, you know, and Amen. every day in my life, I have to trust God his plan would be successful in my life. So whatever he called me to do, the word says the steps of a good man, they're ordered by the Lord. He delights in this way. So I find satisfaction in God and God finds satisfaction in me because of my obedience. 
if I, when I obey him, God says, you know what? That's what I'm looking for. A surrendered mm -hmm. heart that's obedient to my will. So now I can cause what you've been praying for, believing me for, to come to pass in your life. Yes. And God does it every time. Every time. Yes, he does. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I'm glad Amen. to have my son on tonight as well. King King Charles, he walked away, I see. Uh, anything you want to add to this, young man? No, no, he's still going. You know, his face is up there, you know, nice, you know, and, you know, a very nice picture of himself, but, you know, but seeing his face, you know, so, you know, like we're looking at the silly. <laughs> Appreciate that. Amen. Thanks for the encouragement. Amen. Yeah, no God just waiting on you to get in your position to do it too. <laughs> he got a call. He got a call in his life. He know it. He know it. King know that word. He know that word. He calling encouraging me a lot of times. Oh, he text me something encouraging. Mm hmm Yep. Well, Lord says the same. We'll, we'll be back on next week, Tuesday. Hope they won't be blocking me again. <laughs> Amen. But I enjoyed this but tonight. But you know what? Yes. Pastor Charles. Yes. But you know what? I realized the one thing I have learned to understand is that certain things happen where God only knows how certain people to hear. Right. Learn because you look at everything you always constantly doing, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now this is the opportunity. Hey, God said, okay, hey, I'm going to have four of them to be on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Even in that, I don't look at it as a mistake. I don't look at it as a failure. I look at it as divinely ordered by God, even in this. Because Amen. I've been praying for others to come on this Google Meet anyway. So it worked out anyway. Because mm -hmm. I got my yeah. prayer request answered. I had more than one person came on Google Meet, and that's what I wanted. So God set that up for me where you all came on anyway. I thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Well, next week we're doing the same thing. I'll be on here again, Facebook and Google Meet. So share the news with others. Let them know if it does not work on Facebook, they can always join on Google Meet. They can always join on Google Meet. So, um, and now I got to figure out how to close this Facebook because I kicked myself out of the screen and I can't find it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Control all delete. Uh, Control uh, all delete, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm on live, so I got to close out the live. I got to close out the live. So. Now, okay, I got to close the live. Okay. Control all delete, just pop up. Okay. Be in time. Well, y'all have a great night. Love you all. Thank you again for your love support. You too. So, can I look Thank forward you, to seeing y'all again? Can I look forward to seeing y'all again next week? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Amen. I guess we need a panel. Amen. Y'all, my new panel. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Amen. Now, we began to go off the <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good night. Love you. Uh, All right, bye-bye. Right. You too. Come on. Come on. That was good. That worked out. <laughs>